Hi, my name is Lenny B. I help content creators make a stronger connection with their audience. Uh, voiceover artists, actors, musicians, uh, performers w- worldwide, they come to me um, and ask for my help to improve their production quality, um, expand their influence, grow their audience, really um, win more additions and get more work. That's basically what it comes down to. Now, this podcast is made up of my one-on-one coaching sessions with a voiceover artist named Julie O'Connor. Now, we speak about a bunch of different things uh, during these one-on-one coaching sessions, but most of the conversations, especially later on in the podcast, are derived from information that you can find in my voiceover marketing course, and it's called Modern Modern Synergy Marketing for VoiceOver, and you can get all the details about that course uh, on my website, LennyB.com. So you're back for more, right? This is session number two. You want to do this again? Yes, I do. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It, it was a lot of fun. I, I watched the last one myself just to see and, and just kind of catch up and see what we talked about. And uh, it gave me some ideas of some other things to um, to show you early on in this. And, and for for people maybe listening in, eavesdropping into our, our, uh, our coaching kind of conversation here, um, okay. we're going to go from the beginning to the end. I mean, we're going to start. And what we did is the last episode was really getting to know you and uh, getting acquainted. So we're going to focus on the room this time. Okay. Uh, and I know you've got a wonderful looking studio. You've talked a little bit about the things you wanted to change. So I watched your very last video with Marissa. Okay. And you two were discussing recording levels. Yes. And that's something I've been struggling with a little bit because it also connects with one of your videos with Pedro. And you two were... Um, fixing or you were working on his levels and you noticed a little spot where it was not clipping at all but one of his vowels was distorting yes and you two decided that he had a mixer and you were fixing his gain staging and i've had that issue with my vowels since day one if i my one of my vowels is too loud Mm -hmm. it will distort yes and nothing's clipping but i don't have a mixer so yes. my um my answer was to turn my gain all the way down but then my recording levels are are coming nowhere near where what they need to be you're wanting i do turn them up in post-production but okay. i still hear that the vowels distorting little so, crunch it's a little little crunchy yeah, kind of vibe crunch. yeah that's a great adjective for that so um i think that's my main question about that one that's good sure. let's let's start there that's great Okay, because my recording it sound it seems like my recording levels sound better when I my gain is very low. This is this is the one you've got the same one here. Let me see if I can get it in focus. The bolt. Oh, so yeah. one of the cool things about these, um, it's basically very similar to uh, the Focusrite uh, Solo. It's the two i two. It's very similar to the Audient ID four. I mean, they're all kind of in the same neighborhood. Okay, um, okay. Universal yeah. Audio is great. Um, so, but one of the things, the cool things that this has, is um, it's got a little vintage circuit, which is a little saturation, and that's a little bit of distortion. Right. I read about that. I have not used it. Okay. So, so when when you're recording, that is not lit up. Is that correct? No. no okay. Correct. And do you have a mixer, or do you have anything like? Um, is it just it's you have a Rode NT1? And yes. you're going you're going into a uh, volt channel one and then right to your yes. Mac. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. So yeah, there's there's no way it could be a gain staging thing. And okay. I think the vowels may just be if you're not using the vintage. Yeah, if you're not using there's really no other thing that could be doing. It's just maybe okay. just kind of distorting, peaking in a specific uh frequency space okay. and giving that vibe. Um uh, I'll have to. We're gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to listen to some of the recordings to see if maybe we can uh, recreate that distortion problem. And I'll listen to I, it. I actually, um, what I sent you yesterday has one in there, and I left it in there on purpose. Oh, good. Okay, so I, I, we're gonna review that, and uh, I think in the next session that we have, um, we're gonna go through, I think, piece by piece, and look at your preset, and we'll talk about um, the changes that I've made, and see, you know, what you think about the sound and all that. Uh, okay, I, okay. I, I peeked at it a little bit. Uh, before we just got on today, so um, I listened a little bit. So you have a very powerful mid-range. 
And I imagine that that just may be kind of hitting uh, the circuit a little hotter. So it, it, and so what you're saying is when you record, it never goes into the red. You never see it. Correct. Peaking. Oh, never. Nowhere near. But some of those vowels just sound terrible and I can kind of play with them in isotope and see where it's really hot and kind yeah. of tr just select that area and turn it down a little bit. But I yes. still hear it. Well, sometimes, um, sometimes that's what happens when you have a particular resonance and i think it's okay. a kind of a it's kind of a a, a a double thing going on here i think you've got a powerful mid-range and then there may be like a, a resonance just in your room um in that okay. area too which is fine and it's nothing you have to change so um um i think that's one of the things i think would be good to talk about is your room and because okay. really this all kind of starts there you're not yeah, having yeah. a gain stage in problem but let's just talk about the room so when I was listening to your raw audio, you have no, uh, I don't hear any echo. I don't hear any reflections. Uh, like ah, really nothing. That's no, great. because if it I is thought I did, I thought I heard reflections behind this curtain is a big staircase. Um, not it's about maybe 10 feet away. And when I'm talking, I can hear, a reflection of the, of the staircase a little bit because it goes yeah. into this big high ceiling front door area right and i can hear it, hear it. But, but that's why i wanted to get a solid wall behind me but if you can't hear it maybe it's just you know me trying to be that to have that perfection going on that we spoke about last yeah. time i mean that i said was boring yeah if if let me tell you something yeah i know i'm into that but yeah it, if <laughs> If you, you know, you may be able to hear a little thing. If if I, if you were to, uh, you know, walk outside your room and talk, I could probably hear the echo if I cranked it up and you, at the recording level that you had, but it's not a problem. Here's the, here's the balance. This is the really, this, this is really important because I think this makes a lot of people freeze. You know, getting it perfect is one thing if you're doing the next Pixar movie and then you're probably not going to be recording it at home. And, I mean, there point. there is a level if you're working on something and people need it particularly perfect. And you know what? If that client is that big, then you should charge them to go to a studio or to get or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Great. That is really, really, that was a wonderful thing to hear. Yes. That's you, really good. good. That's I mean, really, really good stuff. The quality is great. It's, I'm, and it's not just good enough. I don't hear any reflections that are causing a problem. Sometimes there's definitely some reflections that I can hear in some of the audio that people send me. And I'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to fix it. I feel like uh, that mid-range thing is something that we can work with the EQ. There's a little resonance and we're going to do that. And I'll, I'll play you some examples um, of what it sounds like. And you can hear the difference and everything. But yeah, I, I want I want to kind of put you in the right uh, f mindset because... Um, Yes, there's a level that needs to be fixed. I, there's a level that is not only good enough, but really pretty good. And that's, I think, where you're at. And then there's perfection. Well, if somebody... You, so. Yeah, I think that's it sounds it's, it sounds really good. So one of the other things you told me is you wanted to do a solid wall. So let me... let me um, Oh, before we go there, before we go to the solid wall, okay. um, I think what happens is, and this is this is one of those things about getting in your head, um, I think people, it's really easy to say, yeah, but the sound, I'm, I hear a little bit of an echo, so I'm just not going to put my stuff up yet. Or I'm not going to go for that gig because I, I don't think my sound is good enough yet. That is way easier than going for it and facing the rejection if you don't get it. And, and that's just what, that's what, that's human nature. So the, I, I use the analogy about the band, the rock band. You got to get out of the garage. You could practice 24 <laughs> hours a day. You could practice and practice and practice and you can get better and better. But if you never get out of the garage and book a gig, that's going to teach you more than practicing. Getting a gig, some people are going to go, did you see those jokers on you know Facebook? They were hilarious. I've never heard a bad sound that like, you know, you may get that or you're not gonna, but you know what I'm saying? Right. You may get criticized. You in your mind, that's what you're worried about, but you're not going to. If you, you put your best out there, and it's going to be fine. But my point is, you got to get out of the garage. You got to book a gig, otherwise you're not really going to learn. And then you got to get out of the comfort zone to be to make progress. That's huge. Yes. Yeah. yes, that's huge. Okay, let's talk about the wall. Um, okay, okay. There's a big difference between um, 
uh, absorption, which is sound treatment to prevent the reflections from traveling further. So what happens is, you know, your mic hits, uh, your voice hits the microphone, it goes to the mic, it hits the wall, it bounces back around and hits whatever else, and then back into the microphone at a slight delay. So that's right. where that resonance and things come from. Okay. Um, so there's absorption, but then there's also what's called isolation. And that's, um, that is preventing my voice, preventing people from outside my room from hearing my voice or preventing outside noise from coming into the room. All right. And to achieve isolation, and this is important, <laughs> this, is something nobody, this is something nobody uh, understands, and I didn't even too until I studied it. To achieve isolation, which means to be isolated from outside sound, it has to be airtight. So if you, okay, could, okay. If you, if you theoretically filled up your room with water, like a fish tank, if water would leak out, sound can leak in. Okay. It's, All right. It's, it's true. So That's unless That's yeah. really interesting. I that knew trans that some sort I knew that it had to have some sort of really tight seal, but I didn't know it had to be yeah. like, mm -hmm. like that serious. When you go to a studio, they have the doors that reminds you of a it's like a freezer. It, it it's sealed and it's it's airtight. And and your you know, you'll your ears feel the pressure when the door closes. It's got to, in, you know, and radio studios are like that, but also sound studios are like that. It's got to be airtight. And that's because to achieve true isolation, all the windows and doors have to be airtight, but also the walls have to be, uh, it's got to be mass, which means insulation or wood or brick or whatever it is, an air gap, and then mass again. That's the only way to really, truly stop uh, the frequencies from traveling through. All this okay. translates to it's really expensive and not necessary unless Great. you're working unless you're working for Pixar or or at that level where they need well, that then go to a studio. That is that really is really good news because I've been bellyaching belly about, about, about it since day 1. Yeah. So you, there there are the booths and there are people that will get right, the right. you Whispers know the whisper rooms and, and there's a bunch of stuff like that but you know and, and so here's the other part of it which is um, without going into too much detail, you know, when one of the reasons why you don't have too much of a resonance issue is because you're in a pretty big space. It's not like four by four. You're not in a closet. So um, those resonance uh, issues are completely based on the height, width, and length of the length of the room. Ah, because okay. it's the distance. It's how 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 um, quickly the reflection bounces back. And crosses with the other voice and other sound waves and makes a, a makes a resonance is based on how far away the wall is. So the bigger right. your room, uh, the bigger your room, the less uh, you're going to have a resonance problem in the mid range and lower frequencies. So all right, yeah, that's one of the reasons. So that's a good thing. And what happens is people get whisper rooms, which are great for isolation, but they're four by four, and then they start talking, and unless you have thick. Uh, absorbent panels and if you're only in a four by four space and then you take six inches or five inches from each side and the ceiling it's even smaller you're, you're like you're in a coffin you know with a microphone and, and it gets hot in there and all that stuff too so they cause other issues and that could be really difficult to eq out and, and especially if you want to put a window in there so you don't feel like you're completely isolated you know what i mean so the yes. best the best case scenario is to have medium to really good treatment in a larger space Larger yeah. than a closet. Yes, this room is uh, about six by nine. It's great. It's it's uh, that's luxury for a lot of <laughs> a lot of people in their studios. Well, that's good though. So good. That's All great right. to hear that. So you, that's uh, that's actually a, a positive thing for well, you. Well, this so. is great news. It's awesome news, right? So um, yes. yeah, I was really so I listened to the raw file, and I think we're gonna we'll get into that again. But uh, you had a pretty good sound. So. Um, a Rode NT1. Tell me what you tell me about that mic. What do you think about that mic? I don't have too much to compare it to yet. I started off with a Rode Pod mic, okay. and it's a dynamic microphone. I really liked it. I was looking for something a little more bright, so um, that's what I got led to by um, an agent at Sweetwater, and, and so much reading yeah. and comparing. But you never know, you know, because every mic is different for every voice. It is. And it's true. And, you know, yeah. uh, um, 
And it's what you, it, to me, I, first of all, it's a great choice. I, I agree as well. I think for the price and for, um, you know, for a second mic, is that kind of what you're saying? You know, when you get higher than that in, in price range and in better quality, it's, um, it's, it, it, the differences are smaller and the higher you go, the more money you invest. Yes, they're better and the resolution is better or it may match or, or the quality or the build or the, 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 how much noise is in the system. It's better, but it's smaller, better. Does, does that make the, the, yes. the, the yeah. It's exponentially uh, smaller. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and what I, well, a long time ago, uh, a guy told me I was a guitar center when I was a kid. And I remember saying, and I always remember this because now I agree, knowing uh, what I know about equipment and things, I was getting a vocal mic to sing. And I said, dude, there's like 15 mics. I don't know what to do. You know, what do you think? And he goes, there, it doesn't matter. He goes, I'm going to put on the speakers, the PA system. I'm going to plug one in. And he laid all 15 of them out. And he goes, I'm leaving. I'm going to go get lunch. And he's, he's try every single one. And, and wow. The That's one, a great opportunity. Right. I know. It was cool. Well, I was there all the time. Yeah. Um, and they were all about the same price range. Maybe some of them were more, so they were probably out of my budget, but it was good for him to to do that because um, you know, once you get into a certain range, it's what fits you. Actually, the right mic is the one that makes you feel the most confident and makes <laughs> you makes you perform the best because it's all about the sound. And, and the better, the more comfortable you feel and confident you feel, the better you're going to perform. And, you know, I always go back to, it's a great analogy. It's performing. A band on stage or a band recording or a morning show, which are the two um, things that I have a lot of experience with for a radio morning show. You, you know, it's, it's creative people. They're on the radio, they're preparing, and they're, they're performing every single day. Uh, and a band's the same way. And this is, it's a great analogy. If you go to a concert and, and you've seen a band on stage they start and then the the guitar player is like pointing to here and he can't hear this. If his sound is off, they're not going to be the, they won't play the best. They'll actually be horrible because their head's not in, they're not performing. They're not feeling the vibe. They're not, it's not about the emotion. But if the band's got great sound on stage and it's perfect and they're in the zone, I guarantee you, if you look uh, at, at performances or if you hear interviews and stuff, when when they're in the zone, they will perform better than ever, and it's it's like and magic. Everyone can feel it. Exactly, and so yes. when your sound is right, you know you're confident. You have a mic that you go, oh my god, my voice just sounds great on this mic. And yes, you don't have many to compare to, but it's it's really it's really important. And you'll you know that's the same in sports. If you've got to have the right equipment and feel comf confident that your shoes aren't going to fall off if you're going <laughs> to yes right yes. yes. So it's that's uh, really that's a big important. part. Of it. I'm glad I heard all of that because I'm sure that it resonates with other voice artists out there that it's easy to read too many forums and get an inferiority complex if you don't oh, yeah. have the most expensive mic right. or the, you know, Apollo twin and such. Yep. And um, that's it's good. not it's, it's, it's not amazing. necessary. It's not necessary because uh, and, and I guess I, it's easy for me to say that because I have a room full of gear and I, I and I've, I mean, and yes, I, my goodness, I would love all of that <laughs> stuff eventually. Don't get right. me wrong. <laughs> to play with, but it, it's, it's uh, yes, you're right. It's fun. It's cool to understand the difference, especially if you're in interested in it. it. There is a minuscule amount of uh, increase in quality for the higher expensive stuff. Does not having it prevent you from moving forward and getting, progressing to your voiceover goal? Usually not. Uh, you know, once you get to the point with a Rode NT1 and a Volt, which, which is, is fantastic, or a Focusrite, or, uh, you know, any of the, the the famous or popular interfaces and mics, you you have everything you need. None of that is preventing you. All right, I love it. I love cool. it. Do you need to use a noise gate? When I first started using my effects chain, I had a noise gate up top, and then I, I read something about not using it. And then, so I was playing with using it or not using it, and I'm not using it at all now. But I have noticed in a few of your videos, and of course it depends on your client, Right. but I'm wondering if you always, always. use a noise gate or if sometimes you honestly don't need it at all. Uh, it's a good question. There are, um, I will probably use an expander and, ex and an expander kind of, it's very, very similar to a gate, an expander, um, it's just the, the outcome, the, the, the bottom line with an expander is it's more gentle. 
and it's more transparent. Oh. You just don't notice it. So gate okay. kind of opens and closes, and and it's just it's it's a little bit more apparent. And and really, when you use a gate, you want to try to minimize the noise. And so this is what I always say about you know working with a gate or an expander, or whatever. Um, okay. No gate is ever going to sound as good as having a more quiet room. Right. So so but even in the quietest rooms you know there is a little bit of of noise and a gate you can set an expander um to be so transparent that you don't even realize it's on and that's why a being is very very important and i know you're interested in in processing and you're interested in plugins and stuff too so turning it on turning it off turning it on turning it off and hearing that difference is sometimes the only way and even then sometimes you can't tell so right, i right. will uh, my go m my my vector, my direction, my angle or attack is to making it, to make it transparent. And there's probably you, you don't hundred percent always use the gate. Yeah, I'll put it in there, oh, you but you, but you won't be able to hear it. Uh, an ex I'll use Maybe an expander too high because the, obviously hearing even the tiniest bit of it turning off and on is no good. Right. You know. So so you can use it if your room is perfect up to your room is a little bit noisy i'll still use a gate but transparent like you won't even tell that it's working it just all right when, when there's almost silence it actually closes it to the where there is no si there is silence that's after the microphone so you're really also quieting the self mic noise as well which we're talking about stuff that you can't hear i mean it's it's really really quiet now if there is a little bit of noise in your system you're using a dynamic mic uh, and maybe there's just you know you've got your laptop a few feet to the right, the fans go off or the spinning drives or whatever, the lawnmower outside, whatever is happening, you know, then it's, you could use the, uh, you can use an expander a little more aggressively. And what you really do is you can wrap it around the amplitude of my voice. So as soon as it hears something, it opens. And as, as the, the amplitude of the signal coming from the voice recording closes, it, it actually wraps around the voice and it, it only opens. So again, it's transparent, right. but the more noise there are there is in the system, you're, it, the more risk it is. And then also, this is the really, there's always an also. <laughs> the, also, it's, you know, I can set an expander depending upon your system it is completely related to your recording level. So if today oh. you come in, yeah, if you come in and you're, you're, but it's also the recording level and, and the signal itself. So if you come in and you have to lower your recording level because this particular recording that you're doing is louder, it's a stronger, hey, right now we're giving 20% off and whatever it is, a sales thing that you're doing, let's just say. So if your delivery is more powerful, you're going to have to adjust your recording level to get your gain to get the ah, right recording level okay so that was, that was, that's a, another question i had yeah so sometimes if you do fool with your if you do fool with your gain depending on your performance you should always i mean you and always should also fool with how close you are to the microphone right well that's or not. Good, no that's a great thing to talk about and we should talk about that in the room too I, I love that that's a great that's a very powerful that's another in the zone type of thing um Let's talk about mic technique. Because sometimes I do recordings positions. that are really loud wow. and um, and definitely, like we talked about the A's and the and the mm -hmm. O's mm -hmm. or the I's especially will well, distort. Here's... And then if I do quiet ones, then obviously that's not going to happen. And you can, st I, I heard about the proximity effect. And if you stand closer, maybe you can get all kinds of deep, good, they could be good or bad depending on the, the project but yeah it's it, there's a lot and 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 i think it takes time one of the really valuable things i think that happened as a byproduct of being on the air every single day for four hours sometimes more and then tracking on the weekends or i would it'd be coming in on the weekends and, and you know for for years and years and years and years is i got so used to having ear earphones and working within this microphone zone and you know different places would be okay. different so so the more you do it it's you know having conversations with your earphones on uh, you know yeah, is yeah. a good thing reading and just feeling and getting to know the mic so and it's also directly to um, when i do this i mean like a, a a dynamic microphone because a dynamic mic when you're singing i mean you've seen vocalists i mean it's like Celine Dion or some of the um 
uh, divas that's really sing. You know, Whitney Houston. You you see her, and then when she gets loud, she pulls that mic back, and uh, right, you know, she. Right. So right. what you know what this is? Well, oh, when she gets lower, it's closer, and then she screams and pulls oh, it away. Right. That's compression. I mean, she's doing manual compression. That's that's really what that is. And and you or at the end of a phrase, and then moves to the side, and you know all, all that stuff. That's 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 mic technique. That's working the mic. So you have that same uh, power. So um, now, now this this really to me this this is great. This is a really this this all this information I think is very useful, and it's something that can bring you from one voice talent to the next level. So. All right. Every microphone has a sweet spot, like a tennis racket. And, you know, um, most of the microphones are uh, large diaphragm cardioid pattern. So it's a heart. It looks like a heart. So it's going to pick up mostly in the front and it gets more quiet and, and picks up a lot less behind. So it's it's right in front here. But that doesn't mean I can't use the side if I, if I want to. Or sometimes um, uh, I always ah. used to, because I was, I remember doing, I'll give you an example. Okay. The proximity effect or something. I was on the air a lot with me and a news person and a um, traffic person, and we were all in different rooms. And a lot of times I was by myself. I was, so I was speaking to the audience. It wasn't much of a conversation. And later on in my career, there was morning shows where there was a, a group of four or five or more people. Um, but early on, I, I learned this and it's really good. I, I used to talk to myself a lot and, um, and everybody does that. I would I would do something like this. So I you know I got dressed up. Uh, I had my new shirt on, which was was actually probably a little too tight for me actually to be oh, honest. Okay. And then and you know and then and so I as soon as I got there, you know what I mean. So um, I would you could use that. You could use it as to part of your art as oh, part of the performance. Oh yeah, be, yeah because the vibe and the emotion that I can draw here, and if I wanted to get loud and do something. Versus if I were really soft and I can get really close to this thing, you're, these okay. are tools. So you've got pitch, you've got volume, you've got how close you are, you've got speed, you've got the attitude and the emotion in your voice. There's so many tools and the, the processing could either amplify those things or can dampen them uh, and the amount of frequencies that you could use and, and all that stuff. And, um, in the radio, in a radio situation, that processing, there was a lot of processing for that reason is because it wants to, you want to amplify everything. Um, and th not to say that, you know, uh, the processing is necessary all the time. That's just the style of radio is like that because right, um, right. they want most people to hear it clearly. And usually people are competing with another conversation or the noise in their car or whatever it is. Ah, oh, right. But those, those tools is, those tools are, it's a it's it's those are the those are the tools you you make your art with and a lot of people i think approach a microphone and their thing is how is this going to sound and people are going to like it <laughs> it's, it's not it at all what yeah, you want to yeah. do is my brain goes there all the time it's, it's a reflex it's human nature <laughs> mm -hmm. and if i i think that it would be so much more fun if I maybe maybe just horsing around talking on it when I'm not recording, yeah, project right to get really comfortable. Maybe that's a good idea for pe for people for new people, and for people that are a little still way wet behind the ears like me is just horse around and just get so comfortable when you're not doing something that you're getting paid for or auditioning. Yeah, that's the worst time to play. Yes, yes. Or you know what? Sometimes it's good. You can audition and do do a one, do a, a, a do a um, uh, a good take, do a secondary good take, and then do a wild track. Like say, all right, let me try something just to see what happens. And then you know what I mean. Sometimes you just record three, and then you save those, and you could maybe the you know maybe it's something the client goes, eh, I'm not quite sure. Well, I tried something random, and you could send them something else. I mean, that's those are the you places never know. where you learn. You never you, well, know. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. You may not. I don't know. You, it may not be a good idea, and it just depends. It's also a discovery for yourself, though, too. But I, I, I want to go back to um, the tools again, and something that I really, really learned. A micro uh, that that helped really helped me. A microphone is exceptionally powerful. What, what I mean, powerful, I mean sensitive. Yes, if you crank up the gain, you can hear things. Maybe in the other house, if somebody sneezes, you know, and the windows are open, it's far away. 
uh, 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 especially the more expensive microphones or a cardioid condenser, a large diaphragm mic is very, very sensitive. I think a lot of people, and I, I'm going to say that I heard this a little bit in, in yours. It's not bad. I'm just, you're, it's one dimensional. And I know I want you to look at some, look at it a little bit differently. You can, a, a microphone is so sensitive and that gain knob is so valuable because if you turn up the gain, you don't have to push into the microphone. Let the microphone suck the sound out of you. Hold, so, so you're holding back instead of projecting. And what happens is, I think, natural and human nature, and th that was a big thing for me to discover because I can get really excited but still hold my volume back. But think about how much that saves your voice. Think about yes. how animated you could be because I could really be almost silent, quiet, but still there's so much emotion. There's a lot of emotion and play in that too. Then it's like, here, here it is. If you're, if you're going full speed, full power, full power, something is only mellow if it's next to something powerful. What you're doing, if you're projecting all the time, and I, th I, th I think you can, you could benefit from understanding this when I, and I've only heard a couple recordings from you, but I think you get excited and you want to do a good job and you, you have a great diction and you're very clear, but also you're, you're push you're, you're going to get a, it's like a powerful level, but I think you have a whole array of different strengths. You could almost whisper that mic is going to pick it all up. So what you're doing is you're limiting yourself to one color. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. a lot. Ah. <laughs> something, if you want to emphasize something with volume, it's only loud if it's right next to something quiet. Well, that would take care of my A problem then, my vowel problem then too, if I, right? right? You're doing right. it right. And, and I know you can't hear that because you don't have earphones on, but you exact, you got it. That is dynamics. So, and what happens is a compressor and processing um, makes those, di th those softer things and those louder things, it, it makes them even more close together. So right. you still have the emotion of loud. You still have the emotion of powerful. Um, but not the volume, volume and distortion correct. or strain on your voice, like you just said. But you have to, right. But you have to know that where that, that might be you moving a little bit from the microphone or coming off the mic a little bit or speaking over here. Sometimes you want it. You want this. Wait, are you serious? No. Like, so the only way to know that I might be talking to somebody else is if I'm leaning over there and you hear it, the echo a little bit, you know, it, it just depends on where you want to play, but then also understanding how the gain works with all that. So it's, it can get really complicated. You could see how, you know, you go to Adobe Audition or you go to Logic or you go into any DAW and they have presets and it says voiceover. It's like, okay, you can, you can do that, but it's just one dimensional. There's so many things you could do. Some people use a 416. I have clients that use a, well, I, I like to use this microphone when I'm doing these type of spots. And oh, if, I do, if I'm yes, doing an audio book. I'm having I'm, different microphones for different projects, different genres. And you can do, I think once you get so uh, used and, and in your vibe, and it's it's like, I guess, you know, you can argue and say, Oh come on! <laughs> really, you're gonna use you're gonna use three different microphones for your dudes. You, you that don't would have make sense to. to me. I don't yeah. think that's strange. <laughs> no, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't, especially if you know that ah, oh, this mic. I love this tone, and it has this vibe when I move this way, and that's perfect when I'm doing this presentation. If you if, if you feel the most comfortable, and it's drawing something out of you, and you you know you can't uh you can't argue with success if it's getting you gigs and it's yeah. working, and you feel happy <laughs> doing that, then then absolutely. But there there is a lot. Um, of play. It's like I could give um, this microphone, I think I mentioned this before, you give this microphone to one singer and you can give this microphone to another singer. It's how they play it. It's like an, it's an instrument is really it is, is, is really what it is. The same singer can make somebody cry and this person could be just as good, but there's not a much emotion. But, you know, it, 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 it's all about their performance. It's all right. about um, what it does uh, how it helps the performer and then and then how you use it but it is an instrument because um there are so many different things the tools you have and how you work and interact with the microphone to pick that up and all that doesn't matter 
unless, tons of sense. Yeah, and, and also what reduces that power of the microphone is a bad room or noise or a bad recording level. <laughs> so that's why we always say, you know, hey, it's really important. You know, when you minimize reflections or if there is noise outside, record when it's quiet or record in a different room in your house or put, you know, try to think about different ways because the is the isolation is very expensive. You don't want, you know, you, yes, you I do, do the 4 a.m. Some people do. It, I love it, that. Absolutely. When there's no, you, you, yeah, you like those hours, right? I do. Sometimes. One yeah, thing I loved that you had said on one of your videos was your picture analogy about um, exposure. Your game. Yep. Exposure. Yep. That's what you said. And that could, I'm sure that would help a lot of people is that if you take a picture and it's too dark in the room, you can lighten it up all you want, but you're not going to get the detail. Right. And you vice can... versa, if it's overexposed, you right. can try to darken it up, but it's going to be washed out. So um, I think that really explained it perfectly. It gives you a kind of an idea. Yeah, you can. Um, and, and, and I think a lot of people know this or, or can think about it even on their um, their mobile phones, right? Or their cameras, their, you know, yes. their mobile, mobile phone cameras. You could take a picture and if it's dark, you could use the software after you take the picture to lighten it up, but it never looks as good it as if still when looks, you... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because that's what it is. So so it, it, I think there's a good analogy for using oh your God. software af afterwards to try to fix that bad recording level. If you get a good exposure and what happens is every phone, I don't care what version it is, if you take a picture of somebody in the daylight, maybe not direct light because of the sun, but if, if it's bright, they all look great. The more light you have, the better, but the camera... The camera automatically adjusts the gain, but it gives it that that great quality. The um, it's it's really though important to get the gain right going in, and um, the this is kind of heavy. I don't know if I told this to you. Okay. <laughs> color. Did I just say this? I think I told you this. Color is to EQ. It's there's the kind of a thing. So no, let, I me haven't back, heard this. let me back up. EQ is to audio as color is to photos or video. Ah. So so when you have a resonance in a room, it would be like if you had a red cast on a photo or the, the reds are overexposed. So that's really what you're doing is, is very, very much... Balancing it. Yes. And um, it's, it's very much a, an analogy. It's a parallel. Editing it's audio parallel. With, is like editing. So color correcting on film or color correcting and changing... The color temperature and white balance is very much EQ for audio. It's the same thing. It works the same. It works the it same way. It makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. I mean, that is a per for sure a parallel. And I think, I that, think would that would make sense to a lot of people too. Yeah, when you think about it that way and, and when you're getting a good recording level, all you're doing is getting um, a good exposure for your, for your voice. You, you want to capture all that detail. And somewhere just a little above center is really the best place to do it. Averaging a little above center. Okay. This, this is great. I, I think um, um, all these little things add up to you know performance and just having better quality and all that stuff. Uh, I want to ask you about your DAW. And I know you, you like Reaper. That's what you always have used. Yes. So I'll, I will tell, tell you this. Um, I think... As long as the, um, you're, you, as long as you've got an, a pretty good preamp and a good microphone, the, all the DAWs basically do the same thing. They may be, they may run smoother on your machine. Um, they may have more bells and whistles, but they all record audio. Most of them edit audio. They all do very much the same thing. The buttons are just in a different place. So I, I say a big part of the DAW you should choose is if you're familiar with it and you like it. That's the right one, and, and you could work fast. So um, there's no reason to change. <laughs> Not that <Well>. yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not that fast. One fast thing enough. that I've been starting to do, and this was one of my mentors, my early mentors had given me this idea because he does this, but I record in Reaper and I do a little bit in there. I do my effects chain, but then I bounce it, pull it into Isotope, and that's where huh. I do pretty much everything because I can see such detail. I can put a word or a sentence that I like the first half right. 
you know, because you can zoom in so close. Yeah, yeah, really, really close. So do you, you know, you can also open um, the Isotope plugins within Reaper too. Yes, uh, I I used to do that. And then I was having trouble, not trouble, but it was getting complicated having the original file and then the Reaper file. And then, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. it just seems more simple the way I'm doing it now, but maybe it's not. I mean, I am way open to better, a, a better workflow any well, day of the week. One of the cool things is you never stop discovering and learning and you go, oh, I could open that window here or not. I mean, just as long as you're good and it works for you and, and you, you can be consistent and do it a particular way just to get the job done. That's all that I matters. I'm doing a lot of different, a lot of different steps, steps. Yeah. For sure. And going yeah. into a lot of different areas but there'll probably be a time there'll be a time where you're like oh my god i've got too much i gotta get all these out so fast and you know yes. i'm sure i'm sure that happens too so it, it's that's when you'll learn that's when you'll find something that's but I, I, this that, way that, is no 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 no. that's when you'll learn you'll, you'll take the time to learn something a new way to do it is, oh, okay. that's when you <laughs> i don't mean oh necessary. you'll learn you'll learn <laughs> okay. all right and and then let's talk about um uh just all the things in your room. I know you have a bookshelf in the corner, yes, which is great, and you got a lot of That's books and things. Wall. It's a full wall of bookshelf. I do have a couple pillows going on in some in some um, empty areas. I do have a few area other areas that I could probably put pillows on too, if if you suggest that. No, basically, what that is is a good diffuser, and that what that does is. The the um the sound waves from your voice are hitting that, but instead of it being a, f a flat surface and instead of like a, you know geometry like a, a playing pool, you know if they're going here, they're going to bounce that way, you know. But but <laughs> instead of doing that, you have so many things that it just diffuses and it disperses, so it doesn't have uh, the same effect as having a wall, even with uh, absorbing treatments, which I know you've got uh, the foam panels and stuff all over the place, too. So that's why I always wondered why lots of articles say a bookshelf is a great thing to have in your studio. Yeah. And I thought, well, isn't that convenient? That was kind of just coincidence because I chose this corner before I read Did you? Those, that information. Yes. Yeah, those so. uneven surfaces and different types of... Um, uh, material and books and shelves and corners and things as long as there's a lot of it all kinds of different stuff that makes sense mm -hmm. also you know there, there are recording studios that have that on purpose sometimes people don't want dead they don't want no reflect it, it's they're not interested in having no reflections they actually want some so you feel some of the room you know like when you record they, a drum yeah, they set to have life in the room right yeah it so depends what that means when they say that yeah, but that's if you're trying to use stereo microphones or one microphone to capture something uh, like a a quartet, oh, right, okay. or, or or an acoustic guitar, and you want it to sound like you know if you close your eyes, it sounds like the guitar is in a room in front of you. So you want to capture the room as well because it gives it some of that life. For oh, voice, so that's what they mean. Okay. Yeah, for for voiceover, uh, usually. You can add, you can also add that reverb and that, ref, you can also add those reflections in post. You could do that with the software and yeah. that's what they do like for movies, yeah. right? You know, they'll, they'll make it yeah. sound like you're in a hallway and you can add reverb and reflections and things like that, but you, it's controlled. You could do it. So what happens is, you know, for a voiceover, if there's no reflections, the microphone is only picking up pure voice and then you can add in a controlled environment. So we Ver do want to aim for that is what you're saying yeah we because then like our room right i don't i don't want the i think i think what happens is for voiceover i don't want it to sound like the person in front of me i think voiceover and i always want i want the person in my head and you know, i want it to be so me you know what i mean it's really yeah. the voice of what i'm thinking you know yeah. in some situations it's dialogue and you may want to have that too but um it depends. It just depends on the project. But I think that brings me to this question. The reason I didn't cover my entire ceiling with my acoustic foam tiles was because I had read things about keeping life in the room. So what is your opinion? And people might want to hear this about am I supposed to be using these from head to toe as much as possible? Um, your tiles. I don't if you don't if you don't have those sweet, real. Right. 
badass yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah. You're going to use this for now for budget purposes. Right. Should we be doing it from head to toe? Um, I think it all depends on what I hear. And this is what happens. A lot of people will send me um, their audio and, and, and they want me to, you know, they want to hear what the pre-processed sound is like. Or they just ask me some questions. I go, I, you know, I really can't tell until I hear it because every room and everything is going to be There's different. not a black and white answer to that. There really isn't because, okay. you know, some people have a shotgun microphone and that's picking up in a direction. Or some people are in a small room, but they're just outside a room that's marble and tile and it's echoey out there. And it, it just all depends. And and I'll tell you for you and for what I hear, and I think a lot of people, it's your what I hear in your recorded sound, which you're a little bit off the mic right now is not much different from what I'm even just hearing through uh, this recording here and you're off the mic and it's a conversational thing. You're not, you're not doing your, your, your voiceover, but um, and I'm it's, using my road pod mic right now because my NT one's up on the stand. Oh, okay. So, yeah. It sounds, a- it sounds pretty natural. I don't ha- hear the echo. I don't have an issue. It's, it sounds pretty good. And there's, there's not, there's not a long echo. I don't hear a short resonance. And I think that's because you're in such a large room. And, um, you know, sometimes often people that I work with, they've got this issue and I'm like, wow, your room and the resonance in your voice, it just happens that it's the worst possible case scenario. And it like, and it's, and you've got this big problem and we got to figure out, we got to move something. Let's, let's turn your desk around. Let's put the mic facing this way. And, you know, we yes, have to I've go- seen some of your videos that you do a lot of moving around things and testing yeah because it takes that and then there's some cases like yours where it, it happens that it sounds pretty good uh, to begin with like i yeah when i listen to it um your voice uh well is, I, I anticipate it's going to process pretty well and i don't hear any reflections or major resonance issues where i would say yeah, we may want to add some professional sound treatment to absorb this because it's bouncing around you know um have you ever been in a room and you're listening to your stereo of dating myself you're listening to your record player your, hi- age. your hi-fi i uh, know i don't think so i think i'm quite older than you are i uh, said i'm 50. oh okay well then we're in the, we're you're in the neighborhood yeah the, uh, the I can um tell we're the same age okay yeah with the music and stuff you ever yeah. you ever li- you're listening to a stereo in your friend's room or when you were growing up and if you move just to the line whoa the bass is really loud right here i feel the bass yes. uh, and then you would go to the center or go somewhere else in the room and it wasn't as heavy but then you know if you stand in this one area it really was hitting hard well that's you know how i feel about bass so uh, you love the you like bass yes <laughs> um but so what happens is there's there's a build up of that frequency because of the location how it's bouncing in the corners and it's resonating and that's why it's a lot louder. So it, it really depends on the room size okay. and where you are in the room. There's actually models. If you if you input, it's, it's computer models. If you input the length, height, and width of a room, it'll show you where in a three-dimensional room space is like, okay, the 300 frequency is going to resonate at this elevation, just a foot off from the left side of the wall. Oh. 300 and it's really wild it's 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 so you could actually and and some recording studios will do that because um they'll have it the room tested and there are let me put it to you this way there are some there are some recording studios that have i know this is going to sound crazy up to 10 feet or more thick panels that does sound crazy in the back you know sure yeah, because there could be if they're in a mixing room, uh, that you need that thickness of absorbing panels to go down to thirty hertz or sub low frequencies. Otherwise, you're not hearing the right stuff. Well, yeah. let's. You say, don't need that. You don't need that in your room. Right. So let's say you know people are just starting out and trying to put their room together. Uh, there's since I discussed last time that there was so much information out there for you. There is a thing as too much information yeah, because yeah. then I got down a rabbit hole reading about bass traps yep. and so many things. And then I'm looking around this room going like this. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you don't know. That's, and that's a problem. You, you don't know. So it's, it's always good to send it to somebody maybe um, who has worked that's in the studio answer. and knows what to listen answer. for. Just yep. instead of trying to figure it out, send it to you and you will tell okay. them. Okay. Yeah. Right. right? Isn't that's, that the answer? That is a lot of, I think um, 
what I'm able to offer, you know, because I have a studio and, and I'm working, I have a studio with good, uh, monitors that were designed for this. It's a well-treated room. It's balanced. Excuse right, me. Right. And it's, and, and um, uh, you know what you're doing. <laughs> and I work specifically with voice. So right. I can That's, give that you. That was huge because yeah. there's a lot of information out there for music too. Yeah. But, but honing in on the voice was More important to get that specific that specific information. Yes, and then you feel like, you feel confident when you go, oh, well then you know, I've listened to it on my speakers and I've got other speakers that I listen to it and you've heard it, it sounds good to you. Well, I, I confirm it. I think that's what that's what I'm able to yes. do. So then, then you can yeah. move on to the next step of having the confidence and work yeah. on your performance. Get out of the garage. Yes, get out of the garage. <laughs> I, have a, uh, I have a client that I'm working with and I, I mean, it's a, it's a great example. He's in uh, a couple. One's in, one's in Canada, and uh, uh, I think one's in Denver. This this person I'm working with, and man, it sounds so good. He, I've seen pictures of his studio is beautiful. He's got the highest level gear. It's mouth watering type of microphones that he's using and preamps and stuff. He's in his head, and he's just like he can't. He goes, I just, I just don't know if it's good if there's something wrong and I, I mean i can't I, i'm gonna write him today i can't wait to tell him like dude i think this is the best i've ever heard ever it's you know stop, oh, stop freaking out for him yeah it does I hope, I hope that'll sink in for him it makes me kind of second guess myself well, am I, I hope i'm telling him the right thing from, from what i'm hearing i always i like to use the word and you'll notice this a lot in my opinion because it is only my opinion but it, it does. It, it, and is it, there is there really a, a right or wrong? It's everyone's opinion. I mean, this is. It's art when you're talking about audio and you're talking about. Yeah, because I could process you something. Said that in your EQ class, yeah. I I had kind of heard it before. I'd kind of thought it before, but hearing you say that in your EQ class when you said this is art, everybody, it really takes the pressure off of us because. There's not a right or wrong. There's not someone that does it right and you're doing it wrong. Right. Yeah. It's and if and if it sounds good, different tastes and yeah, let's get it the best we can. The way but that I in our head, you're yeah, definitely you're hurting yourself. You are, and and Me. it's and you can never win that way too. But you know what? How I uh, how I came to the, that conclusion is, you know, I I tried to be really. Um, open and, and and always learning and I, I tried to not be the person that's going okay i figured this out and no if you're if you're not doing it this way you're wrong i don't want to be that and I, but i also know i could always learn and i'm always learning i'm still learning on, on stuff but the the way i came to that conclusion was you know i would process something and then i would say hey you know this is what i think sounds good and i would get a ton of people and comments and stuff that would say oh my god this is great i like what you're doing blah 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 and then there's other people that would say it's good but i actually prefer this way better and and you know instead of me going well you don't know what you're talking about right, right, i would right. i would go well tell me what you're hearing and and wh what are you listening on and why do you say that what makes you feel that way and let's talk about it and and you know and approaching and having an open attitude and um then i go oh okay and this person is just coming from a different location and they're hearing differently and their, their history and their, uh, influences are different and they like this style. So it's art. it's like, it's like you, two yeah. painters can paint something yes. and it could, they could both be amazing. And is it right or wrong? It's not, if it's art, it just doesn't work that way. I think that can help us out so much because we, you know, those of us that just are trying too hard. Yep. And like, maybe that's what you heard in my voice. Um, there's some recordings I'll hear of my own. I'm like, that sounds like I'm trying too hard yeah. so bad. Yeah, that's easy to do. Myself at all. And you know, our generation, when we grow up with the commercials going like this, uh, right. I'm emulating that a little bit. Not right. sure if I should. People like more <laughs> conversational these days. Yeah. So if I just would relax and like you always say, be your authentic self, then... I just think that's going to win. I, I think that always wins because, um, product. yeah, people are drawn to just auth authenticism. Is that a word? Auth authentic. Yeah, well, I, it, it makes sense if even if it's not. Okay, good. Yes, <laughs> I, I think people are draw. People trust that, and people uh, are drawn to that. And it and 
and that's what marketing is all about messaging and creating an, an emotional connection and so the more authentic you can be and the more real i really think that's the answer and that would help it also takes the pressure off because if you're having to do a recording about a product that you don't like or you don't believe in or you don't want um then you're fi- you, then it's not real it's not or, or, i would even go as far as saying if it's something you don't know anything about or you're not passionate about <laughs> The opposite holds true. If you know it, like we talked about in the in, in the last uh, the the last meeting we had was like the Jeeps. You love Jeep. And you're going to talk about that differently, and, and it's and that connection yeah. is is honest and authentic because it is, and and you know that's what you should focus on. I I, I think um, let's do this. I want to talk about before we got to wrap up here pretty soon, but I I want to talk about your speakers and how those relate okay. to the room, and I think we've. We've talked uh, about all the big uh, uh, issues of a room and what you need to know and how you should feel comfortable. Um, uh, the speakers are, are also good too, especially with you uh, when you want to reference back and listen. So the microphone, and now you know from our conversation today how important the room is. A small room versus a big room versus uh, a room that is um, isolated or not isolated if it's loud outside or whatever. And how it interacts with your um, the wall units and the shelves versus all the panels and things, and how important that is to uh, to have you interact from an, on an emotional basis. Now, the same exact thing holds true if you have an echoey room with your speakers. So, so think about it this way: your voice is the speakers, and then that is the ear. Then, when you play yes. back, yeah, it's okay, the, okay, you know, okay. it's the oh, same right. thing. Right. Right. So yeah, yeah. if you have a poor room when you're playing, so that so it's really double. So if you've got a resonance and I'm recording and it's recording the resonance, when I play it back, I'll, okay, the, the speakers are in a different location. But if there's a bad resonance, you may have a different resonance because the speakers are in a different location in the room and you're hearing. The point is that's why they go. This is That is exactly why people go, well, I recorded it sound good, but then when I go and play it in another um, in, in the car, it doesn't sound the same. It's not as good. It's because you are buying into those resonances. What if if a three hundred hertz sounds at this level in this room, but it's not real because it's a resonance, and then you play it over here, it's 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 much lower, uh, and so you've EQ'd it differently, and so you're going to hear it differently. It's just all of that. So um, you know, to get a blank canvas of a room that has minimal reflections, minimal resonances for both the recording and the playback is is just as important. I believe the iLoud, I haven't used them, so I don't know. And then also the speakers themselves. Have you heard your earphones and then you've heard somebody else's earphones like Beats or something and they have like so much more bass and it's different. Earphones are colored. They color the audio and the frequencies to give you a different vibe. Speakers are very much the same way. And the more expensive the reference monitors, the more flat they are. They give you a true representation. Right. But that doesn't right. matter if your if your room's messed up or your room's too small and you don't have, you know, so it's, it's really like it all compounds the problem. Okay. Well, well I've, I've noticed, noticed that. that. Then that actually that was actually one of my, my um, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. That was one of my questions on here. I see so many artists use their headphones um, while they're recording, and I never do. And I read that that's just a matter of taste. And also, I use my studio monitors when I'm editing much more often than these. I only put these on when I need to hear really details right um if i'm not positive but but yeah i know it's good again not a right or wrong answer right i guess i wanted your thoughts about it a little bit i know you touched on it in a few of your videos as well but yeah so what i'll do is um to be honest um what i what i'll try to do is use earphones if i'm recording and i'm self-editing at the same time so what I'll do, because I want to hear the little intricacies, excuse me. So, okay. so what I'll do is if I, you know, I may not hear a, a, a lip smack or a, 
I don't know, a sibilance issue or something. And if right. I've got the earphones on, I'll know that once I finish, if I'm reading a script and I go in that one sentence, I'll know, uh, let me do that sentence over again. You know, I'll go back to the whatever consonant will be a good edit point and I'll read it again. So I'm, I'm kind of self uh, editing as I go and knowing that because that's where I'm going to go back. hear it until we listen to it back unless you have your headphones on. Sometimes, yeah, that's 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 one good case for that. The other case would be is if you're having a conversation with somebody else in the room on a microphone, you know, you don't you don't want to feedback or bleed into each other's uh, mics, and so you may they may be further away, and you want to be able to hear them the right way. Just monitoring may be a way too. Uh, also, also, I don't know how loud this this is probably the biggest one I use earphones for. I don't know how loud something is, and it could have possibly. Uh, distorted unless I have earphones on. Mm. So if I am getting really close or I do say something really loud, I don't really know if that distorted until unless I, I'm hearing. That's probably why I would mostly do it. Um, I'm going to play with that then because yeah, I you just could, I've never worn them while I was recording. And other people don't because you want it to be, uh, you know, your recording level is set where it is and you never move the mic and you know that this is just a good space and you can perform better because you, you're not... Um, confined sometimes that your phones can make you feel that way. It's whatever's more comfortable. I will say that I always edit and I've made this mistake in my videos and I just did it in one of the, the more recent ones. And I have to always remember this. Um, when I edit and I've got, I don't know how many pairs of earphones of different types and different styles and stuff. Nothing sounds as good as my monitors that were designed for that playback. So I heard you say that. So I that that kind of gave me a little bit of reassurance that I'm not doing the wrong thing yeah, by yeah. editing with my studio monitors. But, and that's I think you're going to probably find the bet you're going to get the best result that way. I always prefer to mix with the monitors, and I also get in the right listening position. And sometimes I'll move, or, or I'll, sometimes I'll stand in the corner and just listen to it again, or whatever. Oh, and oh yeah, just to hear it. Uh, sometimes. I'll I'll listen to it in another room. Like I'll, I'll put it on in here, and I'll go in another different room, and just just to hear what it sounds like or whatever. Just to just to give the difference, because people hear it in different ways. But I will tell you that usually the uh, frequency response of the earphones, even if they're expensive earphones designed for that, the only way to really get uh, professionally close is they have software that corrects for that and. Um, I, I, I came multimedia I, I came multimedia who also makes the iLoud speakers have uh, something called arc and the sonar works there's a bunch of different yes. there's room room correction software and it's involved and it's not completely totally necessary unless you That's are what I was gonna ask you, is it necessary unless I mean, you are modifying and eqing your voice every day or different voices or you're you're eqing oh, instruments and you're recording different a band today and then next week i'm recording this band song and this vocalist you know unless you have different source material but if you have your own and especially one man band yeah and and i mean that's what the preset that, I, that i'm making for you is going to do i mean i'm referencing all that getting it focused and getting it balanced for you then you know as long as you don't as long as you don't use a different mic as long as you use your mic in this space in this room with my voice that preset is going to stay and be balanced and uh and work probably better than um, just trying to figure it out because it's a reference, right? I've got your ears, my ears. We we, we both uh, have two different systems. We're listening to it on different systems. And we, um, you know, I also don't go, here's and your you preset. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope, hope to, yes. I also, I also, I don't go, here's your preset. Now use this. I, yeah, I go, I okay. go, right. Well, I go, uh, what I'm going to do is when I send you uh, the sound, I'm going to go, you know, how do you feel? Do you feel comfortable? Do you like it? And again, it's art. I can massage it and move it and change it and modify ah. it. Well, yeah, well, yeah, because if you, uh, and there are also levels, you know, so I've got presets that I use when I'm aggressive or I want something powerful to really get your attention. And then if there's something intricate and soft, there may be different uh, processing or different frequencies or different compression that could bring different things out that way. So it's a tool, you know, it's a, it's a tool to make the most emotional connection. So there's different strength levels and things that I could do as well. My, my point is, it's not like, here's the preset. This is what I think sounds good and go. It's we, go. we work, <laughs> right. We work together to where you're comfortable. The point is you got to be like, I love the sound of my voice. I totally know this sounds good. I think it sounds good. 
other people are telling me it sounds good. So it's uh, remember that weight is off of your head. And then you start uh, performing and just it's so then you important. make that it's connection. Imperative. Yes, you can make that connection and that your performance is the right way. Then you can oh. concentrate on your performance because if your brain is going to a million different things, your performance yep. is going to lack. Absolutely. And, and and I think this was in the EQ course. I think it was the EQ course. Remember the uh, the part where the singer steps up to the microphone? I know everybody's seen that before. They step up to the mic, the lights come down, there's a one spotlight, and they're just about to start singing. They take a second, right? The the vocalist gets in the space of the song. Have you have you heard about that before? Have you I seen that before? I don't think that was in your EQ class because maybe I just took it and I don't remember that part. Yeah, maybe it was one of the other videos. You know, this maybe happens so. all the time. Uh, on award shows, you see they they step up to the microphone and the you know the singer will will close their eyes. They have to get mentally in the space of the song. What's the message of the song? That's Lady Gaga, right? I mean, that's that level when when there's going to be a it draws emotion. It's a powerful song and there's a message there. They have to get in the space of the performance, and you know that's the difference between award winning and not sometimes is, you know, those are the performers that get to that level. They have to put themselves in the song situation. And that's really what you're doing for a pizza commercial. You know, I mean, you, you, you want to, yeah. you want the same thing. You're, it's just a different level. It's a different vibe. It's a different yes. you know, channel, but it, you're doing the same thing. And I think we covered a lot of good information today. Well, we're going to next time, we're going to listen to your preset. We'll listen to your raw audio We'll All listen right. to your preset. We'll look at your preset. We'll see. Uh, I'm trying to think uh, on if we should have you kind of mess with it for a while before. Yeah, I, I think what I'll do is I'll send it to you. Let's get it All installed right. and then um, okay. play with it for a little bit. And then that'll be the next uh, the, the next meeting we have. We could talk some details about how to use it. And then um, I think we're going to start talking about marketing and... Great. Uh, your, your website and positioning you uh, to get in front of the right people and some of your strengths and really what you want to do. Fun. All of it sounds wonderful. Cool. Um, I really appreciate you being okay with doing this on, on YouTube and kind of sharing this little eavesdropping in on, on our coaching I mean, sessions. I appreciate your help. And I, I want you to... Very. The same thing, um, let's uh, put together, if you've got questions on any of the stuff we talked about, even if you want to dive a little deeper on some of the sound treatment things, I know a lot of people have those questions, but I want you to, you, you tell me, or if uh, even if you disagree with something, I like having these conversations because I'm not always 100% right, and you know there, there could be things there too. So, um, But we'll go specifics on, on the sound of your preset that I've created for you. All right. and, then, and then we'll maybe start introducing a little bit of, I guess it's the second half of the bio writing course. It's like, okay, maybe you could share, you wrote the bio after the course, mm -hmm. correct? I'd love mm -hmm. to hear that. And then All I'd right. love to, uh, I'd love to press you on particular parts of it to see what you really want to do versus what you're saying and how maybe we can amplify each one of those and who your demo is, right? You're going after particular type of clients that you know you're a you have a strength and you know you have a specialty and a superpower to serve so right. we're going to talk about finding those people and how to get get at them okay cool sounds really exciting well, you're a, you're a trooper uh, julie i know you're i know I you love all this stuff awesome. no it's great it's it's really good so i, I appreciate you doing this and um uh, all right we're gonna we'll chat again soon yes we will thank you all right we'll see you